This morning, as we celebrate the birthday of our church, I will be reading from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. And happy birthday to the Christian church. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, well, they've had too much wine. And then Peter stood up with the 11 and raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in these days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Here ends the reading of our morning scripture. So before we get, begin with the sermon today, I just want to say thank you to all those that sang today. You guys sounded like you never stopped. So it was wonderful. So in our scripture reading for today, we find the apostles gathered together on what will become known as the day of Pentecost, the day of the birth of the church. And as they're sitting, the Holy Spirit comes upon them with a great noise and a rushing wind. When the people, the people come to them after hearing this noise, they begin to speak to them. And each of the people from all these different areas, and thank you, Peggy, for being the liturgist today. I know that's a verse that's so much fun to read with all the different places and trying to make sure you're pronouncing them correctly. You did wonderfully. So they hear them in their own language. And not since the Tower of Babel had there been this ability to speak and be heard by all. And the people say, some of them say, and I must tell you this is one of my personal favorite parts of the Bible. What is going on here? Aren't all these guys from Galilee? How can they speak and everyone hear them in their own tongue? You know, they must be drunk. And I've always found it a little funny because I don't know if you've ever been around people that have been drinking. But their speech does not become more understandable the more they drink. It becomes harder to understand what they're saying. And I've also always found Peter's explanation to be funny for some reason. What do you mean we're drunk? It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. But Peter goes on to preach a masterful sermon to all that are there, telling them all the awe-inspiring things that God is going to do, calling back to the prophet Joel of what's been prophesied in the past, telling them in the end about the salvation that they can have through Jesus. 
And then finally, 3,000 people come to be saved on that day. And that is why this is known as the start of the church. But today I want to talk about the Holy Spirit. The wonders that can be worked through the Spirit. And how we can find the Holy Spirit in our own lives. You see, I think most people, new Christians and old Christians as well, sometimes struggle with the idea of the Holy Spirit. We tend to be able to come up with some sort of representation in our minds of what we believe God is like. Though I must say, I think we constantly try to limit what God's true power must be like. And I think we are most comfortable understanding what Jesus was like, at least when he walked among us as a human. We again fail to understand the true wonders of his power and love as well. However, when I think about the Holy Spirit, we tend to struggle because we're not giving the same sort of description that we are for God and Jesus. And even those with faith can struggle with the idea of something so ethereal. A feeling of something that moves among us and through us can be very hard for us to pin down in the limitations of our human minds. So then when we consider how humans can struggle with the understanding of the Holy Spirit, I think we can begin to understand why some of the people that were standing there listening that day came to the conclusion that the apostles must be a little bit liquored up that morning. Now, one of the questions that I have struggled with in my own walk, and I know that others have struggled with this in theirs as well, is this. Is it the Holy Spirit that I am feeling? Is it the Holy Spirit that's forming these ideas in my mind? Or is it just me? Have you ever felt that way? I'm guessing you have. The best thing that I, can, I think we can do is this. When we begin to feel that the Spirit is moving in us, we need to give the Spirit time to work. You see, we are impatient people. We as a society have become accustomed to being able to have fast service no matter what it is. If you have to wait longer than two minutes on a hamburger now, it feels like it's the end of the world, right? And we are now accustomed to be able to find answers to things as fast as we can get our phone out and type it into Google. That's how fast we can get an answer. So it's nearly instantaneous. But unfortunately, we can't do this when it comes to the Holy Spirit. And it's important for us to remember this. God's time is not our time. He does not and is not bound by those same time limitations. So I think it's important for us to become or work towards becoming more patient. We have to take time to pray about the things that we feel the Spirit leading us to do. We have to allow the space and time to ponder, to meditate, and to listen. For me, I've found the best thing is to take time to go out and be on my own in nature and to simply be quiet. That gives me that time to ponder and meditate and to search out my own thoughts and feelings and to separate those away from what the Spirit is calling me to. Now I know that it seems like an impossible thing in our world today. How can we ever expect to have time to ourselves? You might be saying to yourself, Pastor, don't you know I have 40 errands to run today? And don't even ask me what my schedule looks like tomorrow. Believe me when I tell you, I understand perfectly how you're feeling when that is how, what you say. Yet I still believe it is of the utmost importance for us to take that time and try and listen for the Holy Spirit. I believe it is how the Lord tries to communicate with us. So if we're saying as Christians that we've given our lives to Christ, and if we're saying that we are willing and wanting to be a servant of Christ, then we must be willing to try and listen to him when he speaks. There's an old hymn that goes, Take time to be holy, 
Speak oft with the Lord. Abide in him always and feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak, forgetting in nothing his blessing to seek. And this might be the most succinct way to describe what I'm trying to say today. We have to take time to be holy. We have to take time to speak to God and to read and feed ourselves on his word. The second part of the verse is the next thing that we must do in order to have a true understanding of the Holy Spirit and how it acts among us. To look for the Spirit in our lives and to look for the Spirit in the lives of others. To take time to be in service. To take time to be in communion with others. You see, when we do these things, we can find the Spirit working among us. And when we are working together to help others, we can feel the Spirit is right there too. When I think about my own life, I can feel the Holy Spirit when I'm called to serve. I feel the Holy Spirit when I'm talking with someone that's struggling. I feel the Holy Spirit when I'm doing things with my children and I see the joy on their faces. And when I take that time and, and find myself in situations that are difficult and having tough conversations with people, I cannot tell you how many times I've opened my mouth and the right words have come out, even though I could never find them myself in my brain. And I truly believe that's the Holy Spirit speaking. But you see, for me, the Spirit is there when I'm working in the lives of and helping the lives of others. We also have to be able to sit back and look for the Holy Spirit in the lives of others. Sometimes we can see it working in their lives way before they can see it working in their lives. And I have to tell you, I'm standing here today because I had a mentor who saw the Holy Spirit working in my life and said to me, I'm pretty sure the Holy Spirit's calling you to be a pastor. And I said, I'm pretty sure you're right. <laughs> now you might be saying to yourself today, why should I care about the Holy Spirit? I mean, if we're talking about the big three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, surely the Holy Spirit is the least important of the three. Well, I don't think that's the right way to look at things. You know, one of the things I hear most as a pastor there's two things. One is I'm concerned about this world and the way that it's heading. The second is I'm concerned about this church and the way that it's heading. And I've said this before, and I believe it bears repeating. I truly believe that when this pandemic ends, whenever it may be, it's an opportunity for the church to grow. It's a chance for us to be led by the Holy Spirit to show others the love of Jesus Christ. But we must not wait. We must begin showing them right now. Now, if you find yourself concerned about these things, the world itself and this church, then we should be looking to the Holy Spirit for guidance. After all, it is the Holy Spirit that made the day of Pentecost possible. And could you imagine the way that this community could turn around if 3,000 new Christians were made today? What wonderful things could be accomplished if that would happen? So if that's what we want to happen, then we must be willing to listen and look for the Holy Spirit. We must be willing to act when we are able to discern where that Holy Spirit is leading us. And who knows, maybe we can bring 3,000 people to Christ in just one day. My challenges for you this week are these. Take time to be holy. Set aside time in your life that is dedicated only to God, other than the time that you are in church. Listen and look for the Holy Spirit in your lives and in the lives of others. And when you see it in the lives of others, do everything you can to encourage it.